This introduction gives a brief overview of RiskIQ's attack surface management platform, allowing companies to keep up with digital transformation. The digital attack surface has evolved. Companies need to be thinking about unknown, known, and rogue assets and anything that they might have online. This attack surface is comprised of things like mobile applications, infrastructure, domains, email addresses, users, web components, and more. Keeping up with this has been quite a challenge as businesses have migrated to the cloud, especially during the pandemic. The digital attack surface as it's expanded for businesses has also provided attackers with opportunities to hone in their attacks and take advantage of this. Attackers are able to perform website injections, attack supply chains of businesses, target users via water holes or spear phishing, exploit third parties, deliver mobile malware, go after social media, stand up lookalike infrastructure, etc. The amount of attacks an attacker can actually do have expanded greatly as the attack surface has gone along with it. RiskIQ offers an attack surface management platform that services two key problems, discovering unknown internet assets and investigating threats. This platform enables a number of different opportunities and a number of different use cases to be conducted. Let's take a look into the platform. So this begins with our global collection network. RiskIQ has been collecting data for over a decade, starting with our proxy network, our web crawling, and our internet scanning. All the information that we've collected has been stored and saved within our databases and serves as a foundation point for the rest of our platform. Next, we have our internet intelligence graph. Our graph is informed by all the data that we've collected over the years. We use our advanced internet reconnaissance to collect billions of points of information amounting to terabytes of raw collection a day. And then we process this in near real time applying data science, machine learning, and our security research team to output internet data sets and derive data sets. We're also able to understand just how these different data points link to each other, effectively building a graph of the internet. What this enables us to do is handle different use cases. A key problem that we've identified within our customers is security programs are often overwhelmed by rapid digital growth, creating hidden risks and threats. This is our Discover Unknown Internet Assets capability. It's comprised of risk scoring, asset inventory, and identifying key vendors and dependencies within your attack surface. By using our data, you're able to extend your vulnerability risk program and ensure you're scanning the most appropriate assets. You're able to find and eliminate threats and exposures that might be internet facing and thus present a vulnerability to your business. And it also allows you to secure your cloud and IoT expansion efforts ensuring that you know where your assets are, even if they're not directly owned by you. The second key problem that we solve is investigating threats. It's almost impossible to assemble all the relevant data to identify threats and execute the proper response. For this, we have our forensics data and some attribution from our security team. Using the investigate, investigate threats capability, you're able to scale, scale out your threat hunting program and proactively identify threats before they become a problem. You can automate more of your security operations by taking in the raw data that RiskIQ has and its curated threat intelligence. And finally, you can have smarter, faster incident response, ensuring and being fully confident that your breach has been fully contained. This platform enables all these different use cases to take place. Risk and compliance, vulnerability control, security operations, incident response, and threat hunting, all in one stop. Being a true platform means that you can extend existing security investments. We've built a number of different technical integrations and strategic partnerships that extend the different capabilities within our platform today. These service all the different use cases that we have available and help ensure that any existing security investment can take advantage of attack surface management. As part of RiskIQ's attack surface management platform, discovering unknown internet assets is a key capability of ours. And all that starts with visibility. In order to understand your attack surface, you have to know what's actually comprised within it. RiskIQ builds out an asset inventory that contains all of your externally facing assets and then summarizes them through reports and dashboards and risk reports. 
Here, we're looking at the attack surface for an example company, in this case, the Department of Treasury, and all the different assets they have and how they've changed over the past 30 days. Immediately, we're able to understand the different types of technologies that are being applied across this attack surface and quickly summarize it. If we think about discovering unknown internet assets and the problems we're looking to solve, we can use this data to extend our vulnerability risk program by understanding what assets we might be missing today. Not all businesses understand all the assets that they own. Additionally, we could start to find and eliminate threats and exposures by looking at different targeted technologies or CVSS scores, or even simple things like risk that's been exposed through documents. Finally, as we think about secure cloud adoption and IoT expansion, we can use reports and dashboards and the data that we have available to understand the distribution of different cloud providers, from the major providers such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, all the way down to different hosting platforms as well. Finally, we can start to answer interesting questions about risk and compliance. Security hygiene is often overlooked, but it plays a critical role in attack surface management. Very quickly, we can understand administrative pages, login pages, deprecated technology, broken redirects, expired SSL certificates, and even more. And what's nice about having an inventory available to you is that you can build reports and summaries like this, but you can also dive into the actual detail as well. Clicking on the actual widget reveals the different assets that match that particular policy. In this particular case, I'm looking for anything that has remote access that's been approved within our inventory. And very quickly, I have a number of different assets that are available to me, all showing different web login pages for what appears to be network appliances. If I click on one of these assets, what's gonna happen is it's gonna show up why it's in my inventory, the affected security policies, the different components that RiskIQ has observed through its technology, and then all the various connected assets that are also associated with this particular asset. If I wanted, I could view the full details, which includes metadata that I can manipulate and change, and also other more in-breath details about the history of this particular asset. This becomes helpful information when we want to integrate into a third-party system or simply just understand who owns it. If we go back to our inventory, another way in which we might wanna report on this information is through a risk report. Bringing up the risk report here allows us to segment by asset priority, organization, brand, or even just the report date. But at a top level, we have a score that tells us the directionality of if we're doing good or bad. And then we have two scores, threat indicators and security posture. Threat indicators is gonna give us anything related to bad things that are happening within our attack surface, and security posture is gonna give us a measurement of how well we are doing. So if we wanted to, we could go into this low scoring area in security posture and investigate why we might be performing scorely. In this particular case, we can look for an insecure login form where there's 33 affected websites that impact this. Again, having an inventory and all the data available to you allows you to drill directly into the problem and see the assets that are impacted. This saves you time and valuable resources because now you know everything's in one spot. With RiskIQ's digital footprint, you can discover unknown internet assets, therefore extending your vulnerability risk program, finding and eliminating threats and exposures, and securing your cloud and IoT expansion efforts. A secondary component in managing your attack surface is being able to investigate threats. RiskIQ passive total allows you to do that and by being able to investigate threats, you're able to scale out your threat hunting program, automate your security operations, and improve your incident response efforts. Oftentimes, an investigation starts with something that's suspicious or unknown. In this particular case, dl2.onedrive-us-en.com has been seen maybe within our network. Using our analyst insights right up top, we're able to ascertain that this particular domain is resolving to an IP address that's blacklisted. Additionally, there's been new subdomains added 11 days ago. The domain's been registered, resolves to an IP, isn't part of the Alexa Top 100,000, and has, 500, or has several hundred domains that also share the same Whois record and several hundred domains that share the same name server record. Finally, RiskIQ had crawled this information in page about four months ago. Directly below this, we have a visual that gives us an understanding of the last six months of the domain and how active it's been. 
In this particular case, it's been resolving to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which could mean that it's parked. And directly below that, we have a time bar here that gives us an indication of how long this infrastructure has been around, about a year. Finally, we have different data sets that RiskIQ has been collecting for over the past 10 years, and we display those to the analyst in a way that they can filter it or they can pivot on the data. Walking through each one of these tabs, we can start to understand more about this infrastructure, finding related infrastructure, and conducting a full investigation. Starting on the tab on the left, we have our resolutions, which is passive DNS information. We have a who is record here, which shows some suspicious activity, particularly around the email address. We have SSL certificate observations, which show us when and what those were used in registration. In this particular case, Let's Encrypt was leveraged. We have subdomains, trackers. These are things that we extract when we crawl a page. Components, these are derived from our crawling and from our internet scanning efforts. And host pairs, relationships that we identify when we dynamically crawl. Finally, we have more traditional data sets like open source intelligence, hashes, DNS, passive total projects, and cookies. Not all these data sets will be filled in, but more often than not, just having a few of them is enough to be able to make connections. Earlier when we were looking at the who is tab, I made note of this particular email address, whois-protect at hotmail.com. If I click on that, much like any other indicator in the passive total platform, what it's gonna do is perform a search for any of the other domains that have been observed being registered with this particular Hotmail address. And we can see here that there's 551 with 2000 in history. As an analyst, I might wanna page through these results and start to understand if any of them have been seen as phishing. Right away, we can see these tags here indicating that this aexpress-login.top page has been used in phishing. We can also observe that there's other pages that look similar and scammy in nature, and therefore might be something that we want to explore further. As an analyst, I would go through and investigate this as much as possible using the data that RiskIQ provides to me. What's nice about having this data is that I can do this in a proactive manner. I don't have to wait for a threat. I can go and investigate open source intelligence or any other indicator that shows up on my network. Additionally, using APIs and automation, I can actually take all of this data available to me and work it within my security operations center. Finally, when performing incident response, I know that I have enough data available and on hand to make a decision and find all the different associations available to me, giving me confidence that the breach is fully contained. The RiskIQ attack surface management platform was built with extensibility in mind and making sure that our clients could take advantage of their existing security investments. We want to bring attack surface management to any platform, regardless of whether or not it's RiskIQ. Here we have an example of our CrowdStrike partnership, where we're bringing internal telemetry and CrowdStrike intelligence directly within RiskIQ passive total. Looking again at the same example that we looked at previously, we can see very quickly that there's CrowdStrike tags associated with this domain that gives us more context than what we had before. In particular, we can see that this domain is associated with delivery, a downloader, a specific CrowdStrike report, malware known as get and go loader, there's a high malicious confidence, and then it's associated with criminal activity. Below in the data tabs, we can see an addition of a new tab here for CrowdStrike. This is split up into two sub tabs, endpoints and intelligence. Endpoints gives us an understanding of what systems reach out to this infrastructure, and intelligence gives us all the information about the infrastructure that CrowdStrike has. What's nice about this is that it ultimately saves time and improves the incident response efforts and our threat hunting program. Our Splunk partnership brings the entire attack surface management suite directly within the Splunk platform. This example here is showing our RiskIQ digital footprint app for Splunk, which is comprised of a number of different reports and dashboards. All of the asset data that's been collected by RiskIQ has been transferred over to Splunk, allowing us to visualize this information. Clicking on one of the items will then populate a sub tab showing the particular assets that match that particular panel. What's great about this is that you can represent your reports and dashboards and understand your attack surface directly from Splunk without having to leave the interface. In the event that you wanna see more metadata, you can simply click on this asset and it'll go directly over to RiskIQ. These dashboards are easily extendable and customizable to meet the client's needs. So thank you for watching this demonstration. For more information about RiskIQ products and services, please email sales at riskiq.com.
or consider joining our community at community.riskiq.com. Thank you.